Texas A&M on the road right after beating Auburn. And Texas A&M is going to Ole Miss this week. This is a 7 o'clock Eastern time kickoff on ESPN. Remember, we were this close, this close to Texas A&M totally grabbing control of the SEC West last week. And I still don't think half the people realize it's like when you read in the paper, <laughs> for, for all dozen of you that still read the paper, or if you look online or you see an article that says, hey, FYI, a couple of days ago, a comet passed with an X number of miles of Earth, and you didn't even know about it. I, I think still a lot of you don't realize, had LSU held on to beat Alabama, had they scored in one of 15 chances they had the other night and beat Alabama, A&M would control the West. That's how close we were. A&M still has a shot. Bama's got to lose one more game, and if A&M wins out, then they go to Atlanta. Here is not the problem, but here's the issue. It's not going to be easy because you're looking on your screen right now, and if you're not, let me just inform you. Texas A&M's less than a field goal favorite Saturday against Ole Miss. This is going to be a tough game. So if they keep winning, it's possible. Who knows if Ole Miss keeps winning, anything's possible. But I'm really interested to see how Texas, or T Texas A&M uses last week. That's the kind of game, that Auburn game, in the past that we've seen teams use as a springboard. And I felt it, felt it afterwards around A&M and this kind of week, I felt it around the program. I think Jimbo Fisher exited that game with a little more confidence maybe than they had entering it. I think they felt good out of the bye. So forget about after the game. I think they were confident before the game. But I also felt some synergy. I think you don't have to have been there. I think you watched it on TV even. You felt some synergy building around that program. So what I want to know about A&M as it relates to the Ole Miss game is will last week's offensive game plan work this Saturday? To be clear, last week A&M had to do the bare minimum offensively. They ran the ball well. I think that makes three consecutive games where they've had over 200 yards rushing. No one even scored an offensive touchdown last week. Defense was the name of the game for Texas A&M last week, and they just did enough offensively. Just don't make the crippling mistakes offensively. Well, listen, if you're going to shut Ole Miss down like Alabama did earlier this year, then that's great, and you can afford to play that way again. But I think we need to take a little bit closer look at what Alabama was able to do, because on the surface you may think, well, if Bama did it, we got the better defense than them this year. So if they executed that blueprint against Ole Miss, certainly we should be in the realm of at least being able to put up something like that too. Well, it depends on how Ole Miss starts the game. Because if you remember the context of that Alabama first half shutout of Ole Miss, they had two things go their way, or they forced two things to go their way. Number one, Ole Miss going forward on fourth down several times and Bama not allowing it. That's number one. And then number two, Bama made them pay for it with explosive plays through the air offensively. I don't doubt that A&M is capable of standing tall on third and fourth down against Ole Miss. Sometimes that stuff it has some variance about it over the course of one game, but I don't doubt they can do that. What I do wonder is if they can take advantage and you turn on this game and it's 13 or 17 to nothing Ole Miss early in the game, or 13 to 17 to nothing A&M. Have they taken the early lead? Because if you do that, then obviously you're having it shape up as that kind of game. What you don't want to see is you don't want to see Ole Miss happen to convert on a couple of those early fourth downs, which they absolutely could do. In a given game, just one or two plays, there's no way to forecast how that's going to go. And if they do that and they pop you early and it's them up 10 or 14 to 3, then you're having to ask Zach Calzada and you're having to ask that offense to do something you didn't have to ask him to do last week. To me, that's the great unknown about this entire game. Who has to play out of their comfort zone more? And if it's a and I'm not telling you they can't do it. I'm just telling you if they end up winning that kind of game, it would have been for much different reasons than we saw last week. I've had an internal fight all day with myself and with the model because the model and I disagree hard on this thing. In fact, I actually sent our guys, I sent producer Jesse my pick on this game earlier today, and then I flipped on it. And I texted him like an hour ago. I don't even know if we got the graphic made, but I'm going to tell you what it is. So let's take a look at what the model thinks first off. The model is drunk on Ole Miss. The model just loves Ole Miss. So the current line is A&M minus two and a half. The model just flat out rejects it. It just spit on it. It thinks the wrong team is favored. The model actually has Ole Miss winning by two and a half. It's closer to three, actually. I put two and a half, but it's closer to three. The model has Ole Miss at over a 70% cover probability, which is an astronomically high number for this late in the year in a conference game. And I'm telling you, I just disagree. I really think that what's happening, let me explain why I disagree, not just flipping a coin here. 
What I think is happening is I think that our model is ingesting what Texas A&M has been early in the year. That's all it has to go on. And what I'm about to say is born out of gut and it is born out of intuition. I don't have numbers to back this up. I really feel like there's some synergy with this A&M team right now. And I also feel like what they were, which is again, the data cluster that is taken into account by this model, I don't necessarily know if that's the best representation of the team they're gonna put on the field this Saturday. Also, this is the time of year where depth becomes a lot more paramount. And while we do factor that into the model, I don't know if it's quantified quite to the degree when you stack all these things on top of each other that it should be. So I do think the right team is favored. And whereas earlier today, I lazily sent producer Jesse and director Colin, uh, Ole Miss will win. Let's just pick Ole Miss. I was riding the model. I'm going to argue the model. I'm going to backhand the model. It's been really good to us. I normally lose these battles. Uh, but I got to go with what I actually think is going to happen. I think Texas A&M is going to win. And I think Texas A&M is going to cover Saturday. And if they do, that keeps the pressure immensely on Alabama. And it keeps this bright marquee around the Iron Bowl uh, coming up later in November. So I'm going to take Texas A&M to win. The model disagrees. One of us is going to be right. And I can assure you, we have just set this prediction up to where no matter what, the show will be able to claim credit.